You're watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto, Ontario. I'm Catherine Bullock. Assalamu alaikum and greetings of peace. How to make the mosque more accessible? We'll find out when we talk to Sister Nada Murhi from the Akram Jama Mosque in Calgary. But first, some news headlines. Black community worries about similar Buffalo scenario in Canada. Mustafa wins alternate album of the year at 2022 Juno Awards. Nova Scotia Muslims break barriers through hockey. Video shows Ukrainian ghost village after Russian attacks. And now the detail. After a massacre in Buffalo this past weekend left 10 black people dead, members of the black community here say that Canada is not exempt from similar threats. Chair of Operation Black Vote Canada, Velma Morgan, tells media sources that Canada is, quote, not immune. She refers to a Statistics Canada report that found a 96% increase in hate crimes involving blacks during the COVID-19 pandemic. Toronto critical care nurse Birgit Umagwa was upset with a tweet from former Environment Minister Catherine McKenna that praised Canada for being tolerant. Umagwa says she experiences racism daily. Canadians, she says, quote, should be worried. Toronto-based singer-songwriter and poet Mustafa is the winner of the 2022 Alternative Album of the Year Award for the Junos. Clad in a cream kaftan and white kufi hat on award night Sunday, the artist wore a military-like vest with the word poet written in large letters across the front. Mustafa told the CBC, quote, I always feel like I'm defending my heart, defending myself from all forms of violence. His debut album, When Smoke Rises, is what Mustafa calls inner city folk music. The annual Juno Awards have celebrated the achievements of Canadian artists since 1970. Canada's national sport, ice hockey, has new fans in the Nova Scotia Muslim community. For two months now, the free Tri Hockey program has engaged nearly two dozen children from the ages of seven to ten. The Ummah Masjid Mosque partnered with the Halifax Hawks Minor Hockey Association to create the 10-week program. The mosque's chair tells media sources the purpose is to remove barriers. He says newcomers do not have relatives to teach them the sport. This program steps in and fills those gaps. An Adolu Agency video news filmed devastation in the Pigain village near the capital Kyiv today where the deepest traces of the war that continued for more than two months between Russia and Ukraine are seen. The village was home to 200 people. It was severely bombed by planes so that as of mid-March, 80% of the houses were damaged and are abandoned, turning the place into a ghost village. According to the UN Refugee Agency, over 6.2 million people have fled to other countries with some 7.7 million people internally displaced. And that's it for the news. Muslims with disabilities often feel excluded and are excluded from mosque spaces. As little is done to accommodate their needs. Calgary's Al Joma Mosque is addressing this. To talk to us about it, we have the Vice President, Sister Nata Modi. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. What is your center doing to make the mosque more accessible for Muslims with disabilities? My center is dedicated to establishing safe spaces, uh, building inclusion and making accessibility a priority in our Muslim community. Is that a new priority that has come up? Probably in the last two years, we have been established a disability committee, as well as myself being the special needs facilitator on the Masjid board. So it's about two years that we've been working on this initiative. Maybe I should backtrack a little. Uh, tell us uh, about the history, just very briefly, of, of your centre. 
Uh, so the Akram Juma Islamic Center is one of the largest Islamic centers in Western Canada. Um, we have a school connected to it as well, an Islamic school. And we have many programs and events. We have funerals, marriages, counseling, um, many uh, services within the Muslim uh, community are offered at our center. Do you happen to know how many might attend uh, Juma regularly, for example, on a Friday? Any numbers? Yeah, I would say probably about two to 5,000 people are attending now that we're at full capacity after COVID. So that's a lot of people. That must be like three Jummas or something, or you have a huge mosque. No, we have a pretty pretty large mosque, so we try to keep it to one prayer. Ah, oh, mashallah, that's fantastic. You mentioned being a special needs person on, on the board. Is that your professional training? It, it is not. It's just uh, experience I've had in the Muslim community being a grassroots volunteer working with families with uh, special needs and disabilities. You might not know this, but do you have any idea of the percentage of your congregation that would fit into that category? I don't. And this is something that I'm trying to statistically figure out within our Muslim community here in Calgary, Alberta. Then how did you come to being interested in this if it's not from your professional training? So being a grassroots volunteer in the Muslim community for the past you know, 15 years, um, which is a time I really value because it allowed me to gain a very versatile scope in the Muslim community in the fact that we are lacking to accommodate Muslims with special needs and disabilities. I came to the realization that we don't have a lot of programs or a sense of belonging for these individuals. And uh, I came to the realization that society is disabled in the lack at lack of we don't have accessibility at our, our centers and uh, I wanted to really change this. Is there a special um, um, area of focus for you? Is it going to be in programming, special programming, or is it going to be in renovations? Tell us a little bit about how you're going to make changes. So I think it's both. Uh, sometimes it's not just due to structure, but it's due to raising awareness and building accessibility, accommodation and acceptance within your congregation. So, um, you know, building that sense of belonging and establishing safe spaces for these families. Um, yes, accessibility and having access to enter the mosque is very important. We have been approved for the Enabling Accessible Grant, which is a government grant, a federal grant for up to $100,000, which will allow our center to upgrade our infrastructure with accessible curbs, ramps, washrooms, upgrades to our wheelchair lift, welcoming more disabled worshippers and Muslim with Muslims with impairments. So just to go over that again, that's, that means a, a, a grant to fund like structural renovations that will allow people with wheelchairs access to the prayer area. And you mentioned a wheelchair lift. Yes. So it will improve our existing space, making it easier for Muslims with impairments and all guests to uh, enter our facility. Then talk a little bit about uh, the, the programming side. Uh, the disabilities yeah. that I'm most aware of would be blind and deaf. Yeah, so disabilities is vast, right? We have some people that have autism, some people that have uh, physical disabilities, some people that have mental disabilities. So it really takes some time to aim to fulfill the various needs of the Muslim communities. Uh, we have implemented um, or exploring with inclusive Islamic education for Arabic Islamic studies in Quran. We have uh, disability focused khutbas that are conducted by our Imams. We have Braille Qurans, we have respite care volunteers for families with special needs and disabilities. We also have a disability committee comprised of uh, wonderful individuals who mobilize and organize these wonderful events for us. I've seen a, a, a mosque has had a Braille Quran and they're humongous. Like it was like, I don't remember, like 10 or 12 yeah. volumes like this, but it was yeah. packed away in a box in, in, a, in a storage area. How do you uh, have your Braille Quran displayed? 
well, it's important to have it open and accessible to the community. So I would suggest on a bookshelf and also being the special needs facilitator, you should know all of the, you, you should know, be connected to your congregation in regards to knowing who needs it and who needs access to it as well. So then you would advertise and let them know and show them where it is so that they can come in and find it when they want to. Yes, yes. So we also have uh, been certified by Mohsen. We are the first uh, masjid in Western Canada to be certified by Mohsen. It is a certification that ensures that accessibility is being met at certain levels in Islamic institutions and centers across North America. So we do have that certification on our masjid. So most uh, community members and congregants will know that we do have these resources available to them. That's an organization I haven't heard of. Please tell us a little bit more about it. Oh, Mahsan was founded in the United States, mashallah. They are a wonderful organization. They work with uh, Muslim institutions across North America to implement, uh, again, accessibility, accommodation, and building understanding with wudu accessible washrooms, um, ensuring that you have a special needs facilitator on your board, ensure that you are including all of our brothers and sisters and trying to fulfill their various needs. Mm -hmm. So they are a wonderful organization that's really support supported us and helped us um, roll out a lot of these initiatives and accomplish them. I have a friend who is a Muslim woman who does a signing, ASL, American Sign Language, and she has worked with an organization here called Global Deaf Muslims, and they've tried to bring in a signing for the khutbas, but I mm -hmm. think it's very expensive and it doesn't always happen. What are you doing also to address the deaf community? So for the deaf community, again, connecting with our congregants, if there is a brother or sister that reaches out and says, I do want to attend this event, you know, we are attending this aftar, we will ensure that there is sign language interpretation there for them. And do you have members of your congregation who are trained or you're bringing in outsiders? We're bringing outsiders, which are wonderful, you know, non-Muslims who love coming and connecting to our community and, and providing this service for us. That's nice. You are a special needs coordinator on your board. I think I, I think you might be the only one in Canada. Is there a is there a is there a WhatsApp group or something for people there's who are on the mosque board with that designation? Yes, yeah, so there's actually a Mahsan WhatsApp group, and mashallah, we share all these amazing initiatives, you know, in Ramadan, what we've done. Uh, we uh, share commonalities, we gain advice from one another. So it's very nice to be connected with all the special needs facilitators across North America. And what about Canada? Are you uh, are there others in Canada? I think there might be a few, but Canada is a little bit behind on this initiative. So you are a pioneer and a role model for other mosques all across from coast to coast. Inshallah. What has been the feedback from the community? The feedback from the community has been nothing but positive feedback. I think the founders of our Muslim communities, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them, their priority was building community and prayer space. And now that we have that, when you look across North America and we have all these amazing centers and places of worship, it's our generation's turn to make accommodation a priority. Well, we're out of time, but thank you very much for this brief glimpse into what you're doing at the Akram Jama Islamic Centre in Calgary. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks for watching Canadian Muslim News. If you like what we do, please share, like and subscribe. Stay safe and God bless.